all right welcome to another aqa a level chemistry video uh i am back now i've done a couple of videos on electrical potentials uh and i've finished them now I've finished electrical potentials now i'm going to start a new topic and this video is going to be on bronsted larry acids and bases i'm now going to be starting on the acids and bases topic uh which is a topic that i quite liked quite a lot it's i'd say at the start it's quite confusing um, but and it requires a bit of math skills, but don't worry, it's really it's the same type of math skill that they're trying to regurgitate over and over again, and it's quite a, it's it's a topic that I liked the most. Maybe because I was good at maths, but it's really a, a quite easy topic, and the understanding of it is very very, um, easy to understand. Uh, if you, uh, really the understanding of of acids is is very simple. It's just about how much you dilute it how much you how much concentrated it is it's really about concentration but it's in my opinion acid and basis is really just a massive emphasis on your understanding of uh concentration moles volume but just takes it up a up to a high level where you need to start using things like logarithms and it's all things that you can do with your calculator. So if you don't do a, a, a level maths, don't worry about it. Don't think, don't be stressed about it. It's all things really that's the same type of question over and over again. But from being really honest, this topic is about understanding what's going on, the difference between different acids and different bases and their strengths, and being able to use that understanding as well as your understanding of basics to do with concentration, moles, and volume. Uh, to help you answer a question. Now, this video is just going to be an introduction to Bronsted Larry Acids and Bases. And this video actually will be a short video. I know I said it, literally every video, every video is going to be a short video and it ends up being 40 minutes long uh, with exam questions in it. But this is just going to be a straightforward video. Um, the, I said uh, the person that helped me out with the most of the topic is probably Allery Chemistry. So shout out to his videos. Uh, I've, I've left a link in to, to his channel on my channel description. So if you want to look at his channel, uh allery chemistry good videos there um and yeah i'll also i'll leave i'll probably leave a link, link to the description to the last couple of videos on electro potentials um that's i'll leave it i know because i don't want i know people wanted to do more, more emphasis on exam questions so i'll leave a link in the description to do that video to those videos on exam questions anyway enough of me talking i'm gonna get straight into the video so bronze larry acids and bases so there was these two chemists, Bronson and Larry, that defined what an acid-base reaction is. And because of that, they were able to define what an acid is and what a base is based off this simple property to do with whether or not it donates or accepts protons. Now, Bronson Larry acids, well, Bronson Larry acid is a, by the way, it's called Bronson Larry because they're both their surnames and put them together, they both discovered it. So Bronson Larry. So Bronsted Larry acid is a proton donor. I think that's that's the most important part here. I'll probably put it in. Let's put purple, right? A Bronsted Larry acid is a proton donor, right? And that makes sense, right? So hydrochloric acids dissociate fully to uh, donate. What's it? It donates a H plus. It is dissociating H plus to, uh, into a solution, right? It strongly it strongly dissociates H plus in a solution. This means that it gives up H plus ions in a solution. And examples of and here are a couple of examples of Bronsted Larry acids. But the main key part here is that a Bronsted Larry acid is a proton donor. And the reason why I emphasize emphasize it on this so much is because you'll get an, a one mark exam question where they say what is a Bronsted Larry acid, and the most important it'll be one mark, and it'll give you like two lines to write it. But you can literally say it in one line and just saying it's a proton donor, uh, and that's it really. So. There are a couple of examples here of, of Bronsted Lowry acids. So hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, uh, carboxylic acid, nitric acid, and H2O. Now, there's a couple here that I've, I've highlighted and I haven't highlighted. The ones that are highlighted in red are what we consider to be called strong acids. Now, if you should remember what strong acids are from GCC, that strong acid, the term whether or not something's a strong acid or strong base, is by how how strongly it associates those ions in solution and we're talking about ions here is about how strongly uh we're talking about acids here we're talking about how strongly uh, an acid dissociates h plus in solution so the more strongly it dissociates h plus in solution the stronger the acid is so hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid phosphoric acid and nitric acid would associate more h plus ions in solution so if you have the solution of um one more per dm cubed. Near you can say that 
all 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 the hydrochloric acids in nearly all of the hydrochloric acids in that solution for example would associate all would associate completely to h plus and co minus and with sulfuric acid and phosphoric acids so or acids that have um more h plus in them would they, they they also follow the same principle that they'd dissociate all of their ions in solution but obviously they have more h pluses but the key principle here is that strong acids fully dissociate all h plus in solution so um if i had a h plus um, we'll use that if i had a h plus hcl here hcl here hcl here i think that's the best way i can in hcl here a strong acid all of these reactions would go to h plus plus my, my h is terrible here sorry i'm really sorry about that h um i'm going to change every single one all of these would dissociate into h h plus plus a cl minus and I'm not going to do it for every single one of them. We can see it all go to this direction here. Whereas carboxylic acids are weak acids, so they don't fully dissociate H plus ions in solution. So what I mean by this is, right, you see I had the exact same example here, right, but I used the carboxyl so HCO3, would it be? No, HCO2. Yeah, let's use that one example then. Let's yeah, let's use um CH three C O O H. Now I'm gonna do it for one. Now a weak acid doesn't fully dissociate in solution. What I mean by this is that the H here from the hydroxide here on the hydroxide. By the way, the the hydroxide on a uh, carboxylic acid is an acidic hydroxide that's why when you look at on your um when you look at your data sheet when you're doing nmr for example or when you're doing um probably not nmr but the best one i can use the probably the best one i can say is the infrared there's two hydroxides there's the alcohol hydroxide and acidic hydroxide there's two different types of hydroxides but yeah, so on uh, a carboxylic acid you're taking the hydrogen away from the the hydrogen that gets associated is on the uh, acidic hydroxide Right, so I don't know why I do. I don't know why I do my H's like that. It's so weird. I'm gonna change it now because I can here. Right, so this is the, if you're lucky now. What I mean by the carboxylic acid being weak as it, it doesn't fully dissociate in solution. So this hydrogen here, yes, if you're lucky, if I had four. Now this is a very small scale. Obviously, you'd have millions of millions. Of, yeah, probably millions of these of these um uh. Of these molecules in your solution right but if i was to say just pick out four any four randomly it's very unlikely that even one of these would dissociate into ch3 coo minus plus h plus from this um, ethanoic acid right the majority of the time um the equilibrium will be shifted highly to the left the equilibrium will be shifted highly to, to the left and uh it will just it doesn't dissociate as much, so all of these will just mostly stay as they are. That's this that's the difference with weak acids. And the way we approach working calculating, um, the strength of these acids or the the pH of acids is a completely different way to, uh, what's it? Quite completely different. It's a, a much different way to where we work out hydrochloric acids and sulfuric acids and phosphoric acids, um. And that is pretty much it. And that's, and when I was talking about the um the HCl. You see that last example here. I said that the 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 what's the equilibrium is far to the left, right? The equilibrium is far to the left. With the other example, when I was using um, HCl, HCl goes to H plus. Now this is technically a reversible reaction, but really and truly, the equilibrium is so far to the right. We considered it to be a just a forward reaction but technically we have to show the equilibrium sign here but really and truly the equilibrium is so far to the right because it's such a strong acid um it just wants to dissociate into h plus and cl minus so that's the differences between h uh, hcl uh between strong acids and weak acids just in case that you got confused and this is very important in your understanding of how to then um work out how which which method you're going to calculate your uh, ph for because this is this is all leading on to the calculation process right but this is one of the basic things you need to understand now 
I put H2O here, and you're thinking to yourself, H2O, I thought H2O is, is, um, is neutral. Now, there's a reason why we consider H2O to be both acidic, and you realise that, I'm going to talk about this one later, why, why this one is, um, why, the, why this is considered to be both, well, it's acidic, and also, I put it here for bases, why it's also acidic and basic it's got both acidic and basic properties in it uh there's a there's a whole topic designed for this with, with the um equi equilibrium constant of water i'm not going to go through that in this video here but uh, it has its own reasons why it's in here and both in uh both in acids and bases but i'll go on to that a bit later so i'm going to talk about bronze lowry bases so a bronze lowry base is a proton acceptor and this means that it accepts h plus in ions in solution uh Bronze Larry bases, however, it also dissociates OH minus in solution. So examples of bronze Larry bases. So I've got examples here, but the key process, the key thing here for bronze Larry bases, if they ever ask you, is a proton acceptor. It accepts protons. A, a bronze Larry acid is a proton donor, and a bronze Larry base is a proton acceptor. If you ever get a one mark question that asks that, that's what you write down. But in hindsight, um, it accepts H plus, yes, in, in solution, but bronze stellar bases also dissociate. They're more well known for being able to dissociate hydroxide ions in solution. That's what you understand as, or we usually refer to them as um, this, what was it, not like that. We usually refer to them as A minuses because they could be any type of um, halide or anything like that, but usually you associate with OH minus, but it could be an, um, an A minus, which is the one we refer to here. So. Because um, if you have a salt, there could be a reason why um, we don't use it represented by OH minus. But just think about it, for the majority of times, bronze stellari base is associated, they dissociate OH minus in solution. Now, I've got examples of bronze stellari bases here. I've got sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are very, very, um, very, very strong bases. And it's the same principle for determining. Um, when we're talking about strong bases and weak bases, it's the same thought process, but just with hydroxide ions now, where strong bases will dissociate a sodium hydrox uh, a hydroxide ion very strongly in solution. So it's a, a strong base will dissociate OH minus. Uh, sorry, sorry, let me rephrase again. A bronze Larry, a strong base will completely dissociate OH minus in solution. So. It's, it's some of the same process here, right? So sodium hydroxide, it completely dissociates all OH minuses in solution. So this, the equilibrium is far to the right. It goes from Na plus, plus an OH minus. Now again, if you're talking about dibasic, di, um, diprotic, all that dibasic and diprotic means, if you ever hear it, so um, hydrochloric acid is considered what we call to be monoprotic. Monoprotic just means that it dissociates one H plus. Mono being one protic uh, proton. Oh, sorry. H plus plus a Cl minus. Diprotic means just this is two. So um, so I, I kind of put this here. Uh, I will sulfuric sulfuric acid here. H two S O four. It does actually technically do a, a, a first step of HSO4 minus plus H plus. But in reality, uh, it goes all the way to completion from HSO4 minus to, from here to SO4 minus plus 2H plus. Right? Really, it goes all the, this is just, this is all the steps that goes through it. So from HSO4 to HSO4 minus plus H plus. But I'll just go and write the full all the way to the end for completion. HSO4 goes from 2H plus plus SO4, 2 minus. And this is a diprotic acid because it dissociates two H pluses in solution. Um, and in for, a, a, a triprotic acid, you can see if phosphoric acid is, is H3PO4. You can go, you can see what's, what's, um, what the theme is going there. Magnesium, so sodium hydroxide is a mono, uh, basic, uh, was mono basic because it dissociates one, um, hydroxide ion. Dibasic magnesium hydroxide would be something that's, that's considered to be dibasic because it dissociates two hydroxide ions. And these, the reason why it's so good to understand this because it also it also applies to when you're calculating, um, 
the basicity, or something not really basic, calculating up your pH. You could work work out basicity if you wanted to, but the more time they really want you to understand how to work out the, the pH, uh, then that relates to the concentration of H plus ions. And if you have a diabasic, um, a diaprotic atom, or even diabasic, that would affect your concentration of H plus, it will, because it, uh, you'd have to essentially double it now i'm not going to go through how to actually calculate that in this video i'm just kind of going through the basics of this video and, and giving you a little feel of um what you're getting yourself into and just kind of giving you an idea of what these acids and bases and what they all are what is terminology right but sodium hydroxide here is an example of a monobasic um base because it associates only one oh minus and uh, it's a strong base because it fully associates oh minus so um, the equilibrium is far to the right in solution, you'd never find oh, um in a solution of one more podium cubed of sodium hydroxide, uh, a beaker of one more podium more one more podium cubed sodium hydroxide, you'd never find sodium hydroxide. But it's a very very unlikely to find it like this. You'll find it as Na plus and OH minus if you could find it like that. And same with thing with potassium hydroxide. It's the same principle. They're both strong acids, so strong bases. Sorry. Uh, they're also very good at uh, accepting a proton, by the way. They're also very good at... You can see here that OH- um, here... Well, I'm going to actually film this first to show this here. But this OH- could react very, very well with a H+. That's why we, could, we consider them to be very strong proton acceptors. Because they dissociate... They, the stronger the base, the more likely it is to dissociate into K plus and OH-. And the more likely it is... The, the, if there's more if there's more OH minus is because it's a strong base and it's so it dissociates all of the um it dissociates that, that, that minus shouldn't be here here there we go just remove that from the KOH if it strongly dissociates OH minus in solution you have more OH minus in your solution and therefore there's going to be it's going to be it's, it, it will more easily uh except a proton because there's more OH minus. Now ammonia is an example of a weak acid. Um it doesn't sorry, a weak base. Sorry, I want to say weak uh, acid. It's a weak base. Now NH3 looks like this and this is why it's important to understand why um that is ammonia, right? It's hard to understand why this is a um base and I'll go through it in another video why this is acting as a base. But this, as I said, I just want to show you what these are, why these are weak bases, why, which ones are weak acids. Um, but yeah, ammonia is a basic, even though it looks like it should be acting as an acid and technically can act as an acid in certain, certain aspects. Um, yeah, but I wanted to, I just wanted to, to get this point across that it is basic. And um, now I'm going to go to water because now water is probably the most confusing of all of them here. Water is both. Now, the reason why I put water, now water, it can act as a base. I'll show how water acts as an acid, really, because it really is both really the same equation. It's the same equation for both, but H2O, it's the same. Water is a very, 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 very weak acid or base, really. It can act as an acid in the sense of the fact that it can donate a H+. plus. It can also act as a base because it also donates, it can... Uh, dissociate an OH minus, which means it can accept a proton. Now in certain, that's why it's in solution, when it's doing a reaction, it can act in that way. But equilibrium is so far to the left. If you left water out in, in, a, in a cup or in a bowl here that I have next to me, right? Some, very, very few of them will dissociate into H plus and OH minus. But even those ones would dissociate, would quickly uh, reform again to form water because uh, the equilibrium is so far to the left. So that's why we can say it can be both, but it's the weakest of all. But it technically can undergo that reaction. Some reactions we undergo that we may undergo with water. That's why we technically say that water can act as an acid or as a base. Um, but it's just very, very weak. Now, acid base equilibrium. Bonds to Lowry. I want to make that bigger there. Sorry about this. Acid base equilibrium. This leads on to what I was, what I was talking about with uh, with with water, right? So bronzed acid acids need something to give protons to. You don't give free H plus ions. So when you add HCl to water, the water molecules act like a base and accept protons from the HCl. The equation is HCl plus H two O goes to form H three O plus plus HCl minus. So here, H two O is acting as a 
conjugate base, whereas HO is acting as the acid. You see, because it's the HCl here, the H2O is accepting a proton from the HCl, uh, and the and H3O plus ion is called the hydronium ion. Now, the hydronium ion is technically the one that's acting as the, the is the one that's acting as the acid. Uh, you realistically, you don't just give away free H plus. We write it as this, where the H3O plus would associate. You can clearly see the H3O plus is going to dissociate into this, right? That's a terrible reverse arrow. Into H plus plus H2O. But uh, it, in order for a bronze lauryl acid to work, it needs something to donate the protons to. And that's why we consider H2O can act as a base. Now, you can also do another reaction to make H2O actually act as a... If H2O is acting with a strong base, so say sodium hydroxide plus... Um, Sodium hydroxide plus um, H2O, right? Technically, the H2 would be acting as a base here. So you have... It would be acting as an acid here because it would be able to donate. So you have the sodium hydroxide with the associate, right? Na plus plus an OH minus, but really... The OH minus is going to be reacting with the so the H the H, one H plus one hydrogen from H two O will donate a proton. So technically, you have Na plus plus H two O plus an OH minus. Now this probably isn't the exact exact uh, equation. So is it? I mean, pre re realistically, you've just kind of just just associated the Na plus and OH minus here, really. Um, but it's clear. It's it's about showing here your understanding of the fact that, um, bronze lauric acids or bases need something to give, give or donate protons, give or accept protons. Uh, you don't just get free H plus ions. Lewis acids and bases now. Now I'm gonna go bring on brings on to if I didn't by the way if there's any teachers that said this is completely wrong, uh, what I've written here and you said it's completely wrong, uh leave a link leave a comment in in the video I'll I'll, I'll probably correct that I wasn't too sure about this last part here I kind of just went along with it um sorry if there's any teachers that listened to this and thought I was wrong, uh but it's just but my point being if that's wrong fine but it's about understanding that high uh, water can act as both an acid and a base, right now the next thing I want to get onto here is is Lewis acids and bases, the problem with just Bronze Lowry. Now, okay. There's two models that we follow for acids and bases. There's the Bronze Lowry acids and base, and there's something also called the Lewis acid and bases. And that's important. It's the, it's very important that we have both approaches because they're both useful in their own aspects. Now, the problem with the Bronze Lowry approach to determining what an acid and base is, are that there are examples of compounds that are acidic or basic but don't behave in a typical bronsted lowry model. For example, cyanides and sulfur ions are considered to be acidic gases, but they in themselves don't donate a, any protons. Um, and, now in, and now in comes American phys, physical chemist Gilbert N. Lewis, right? So this causes a lot of confusion, right? So in comes American uh, phys, uh, physical chemist Gilbert N. Lewis, who came up with his methods to determine acids and bases using the understanding of how long pairs are donated or accepted by a substance to determine its property. So instead of using the protons, we can use now the electrons or the lone pairs of electrons to determine, to also use it as a way to determine whether or not uh, a compound is acting as an acid or a base. So a Lewis acid is a, a Lewis acid is a lone pair acceptor. That's, 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 if they ever ask you that here, a Lewis acid is a lone pair acceptor. A, a, a bronsted Lowry acid is a lone, is a proton donator. So it's kind of the opposite. So a Lewis acid is a lone pair acceptor, whereas a bronsted Lowry acid is a uh, proton donator. One's, so one's donating protons, the other one is uh, accepting a lone pair of electrons. So a, lone pair, so a Lewis acid is a lone pair acceptor. So a reduction reaction is occurring. An example of Lewis acid is copper, to, copper, uh, an iron ion. So copper, which is Cu2, 
iron, which is Fe2 plus plus F3 all, and all Fe3 plus, and uh, a hydrogen ion. These all uh, accept a long pair of electrons, and because of that, they actually act as acids. Because uh, as you can see here, you can't. It's not obvious if you're following the the Bronsted Lowry approach. It's very difficult to understand why copper is acting as a as an acid because it hasn't got any hand. It's not easy to see where the protons are being donated. Um, hydrogen ion by itself, iron ion. There's probably more examples, but just here a couple of examples where it's, it, they all act as acids because they're able to accept a lone pair of electrons. And now in your example, when you, you'll probably do some sort of, of um, equation, right? If you're doing an equation you, and you see there's a reduction reaction occurring where a, a, there's a compound accepting a lone pair of electrons, that is a Lewis acid. And now the flip side to this, a Lewis base, a Lewis base is a lone pair donator. Or you say a Lewis, a Lewis base is a lone pair donator, so an oxidation reaction is occurring. An example of this is, is um, ammonia. It acts as a Lewis. And that's why I was, I was going through it um, here. I didn't want to use it as a Bronsted Lowry. It, it can, you can represent it by the Bronsted Lowry approach or the Lewis approach. But Lewis base, it, it donates a lone pair of electrons, whereas the Bronsted Lowry understanding of a base is that it is a, uh, a proton acceptor, it accepts protons. But a Lewis base is a, uh, a lone pair ex a lone pair donator. It just donates a lone pair of electrons. And this is a very big part into understanding how strong this concept here of a Lewis base is very, very important in your understanding of um uh understanding how strong a base is or how are This, this this has its own topic, right? And it kind of links in with ammonia and other topics. But if you want to determine uh, how strong a base is, uh, we're talking about how available its lone pair is to protonation. And what I mean by it is how how available the lone pair of that atom that's, that's uh, on that base or basic compound, how available it is to uh, donate its lone pair of electrons uh, to protonate another compound, right? That's that's and this is this is for we call it protonation process, right? So, this is this topic here is very important. But as for that, I've finished this video now, and hopefully this video was helpful, and.